Hi, um, I'm honored to have been a mentor for Cassie LaFleur. Her double major at UNH in chemical engineering and women and gender studies shows her ability to handle the technical details and consider also the big picture. She instinctively understands the value of well-organized evidence. Even as a ninth grader, she used calculations of cost savings to convince school teachers that eco, about eco-friendly purchasing and how it can save money. This summer, she did not hesitate to develop new skills, media tools, and personal connections from lots of outreach to local, state, and national groups. In my 35-year college teaching career, I'm really old, <laughs> I have mentored over 300 students for research projects. Cassie is one of the best. Can't wait for you to, to learn more about her project. Thanks. Yeah, thank you so much, Cynthia, for the introduction. And now let's talk about plastic. Next slide, please. So the goal of my project is about single-use plastic reduction in New Hampshire public facilities, such as schools, nursing homes, and municipalities, the main focus being on New Hampshire public schools and how they can switch from plastic utensils and trays to reusables like stainless steel. When it comes to my project, the one thing that has already been addressed is community support. People are now becoming aware of the detrimental impact plastic has on our communities as it continues to fill up our landfills and pollute our planet. One example is the amount of plastic a medium-sized school, Dover High in particular, was producing each year from plastic utensils. Every year, they are putting 1,360 pounds of plastic into landfills, which is equivalent to 34 of these 56 gallon trash cans. We know that this isn't good, which is why they ended up switching over to reusable utensils and trays. But the question is how? How do we actually implement reusables in schools? My project serves to address that question by providing information on both the infrastructure needed in schools, such as having the dishwashers and staffing to successfully switch over, as well as how they can afford the upfront cost of purchasing these alternatives by using grants. Next slide, please. So first, I started out by collecting information on schools, nursing homes, and municipalities in New Hampshire towns within the Plastic Working Group Network. Having this background allowed me to start reaching out and conducting interviews with food service providers and town leaders to get a better idea on the perspective schools have related to this topic. I learned which schools had already switched over, as well as schools that were thinking about it, but had concerns about how feasible it would actually be. Because I now knew what concerns needed to be addressed, I started creating fact sheets and infographics that help show how beneficial reusables are for cost efficiency and reduced waste. The graphs I made showed that schools could save thousands every year, even when you include a 10 or 20% loss rate for reusables. I also made sure to answer commonly asked questions and showed that other schools in the area were able to make the switch. For the last step of my project, I created some more in-depth resources, such as a presentation with a video attachment that goes into detail on how re reusables can be successfully implemented. I also wrote up two reports that showcase all of the work I have done within the fellowship so that in the future, others know which schools I've already interviewed and what remains to be done within the project. Next slide, please. This brings me to the future impact of my work. Plastic Working Group hasn't made an Instagram or Facebook account for the organization yet, so I helped start the process by creating nine social media posts related to single-use plastic reduction in order to build a social media presence, as well as increase community support and membership. Additionally, my work will be posted on the 10 Towns Toolkit website for public access. This website is associated with the Plastic Working Group and is regularly visited by those in the state, US, and abroad. Three of my fact sheets have already been posted, and by the end of the fellowship, my other work will go up. Having my work be published will give a resource to other schools and community members so they can initiate a change in their local district. In closing, I just want to thank the funders of my fellowship position, Muscoma Bank, Community Action Works, and the New England Grassroots Environmental Fund for financially supporting this opportunity. I also wanted to show my appreciation towards my mentor, Cynthia, for helping guide me this summer, as well as my advisors and fellow fellows. Thank you. Thank you so much, Cassie. Great, great presentation. Um, Alexis, I guess we'll start with you every time. I have so many questions. This <laughs> okay, is, great. Yeah. This is incredible, Cassie. Yeah. So 
really loved the infographic or the um, meaningful graphic at the beginning showing what's addressed and what isn't addressed and kind of seeing those barriers. After conducting the interviews with different school districts, what do you think is their biggest hurdle for taking this on when we can see that there's so much community support and that in the end they actually would be saving money? Yeah, I think some of it is just kind of like understanding how you may be spending some time doing this, but now you're not going to be spending time doing this other thing. So like some things that were brought up is like staffing um, and like whether or not schools would have to hire another um, cafeteria worker in order to help um, load and unload dishwashers. But um, if you're, you know, spending maybe 20 minutes, you know, loading and unloading a dishwasher, now you're not spending 20 minutes stocking, storing, and throwing away uh, single-use plastic utensils. So I think it's just trying to, like, understand that there are some hurdles, like trying to get grants for dishwashers, which can be very expensive uh, in a commercial setting, um, but that there are some things that, as long as you stay on top of it, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. That's really helpful to kind of shift that perspective of what you're spending your time doing. I like that. So my last question is, if someone here is interested in this, for instance, maybe they're not in the Seacoast region where you really were interacting with, but maybe they're in Lebanon or um, Keene, what kind of actions can they take? Can they connect with the New Hampshire Plastic Working Group to move this forward in their area? Yeah, we do actually have um, plastic working group town leaders that are in those areas. Um, and obviously my resources are kind of adaptable for any district um, so that anybody could bring them up um, or, you know, go to one of our meetings. So, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, th thanks, Alexis. You kind of got a One of my questions was, um, so Cassie, if if you had another summer in front of you, right, if you had another two or three months in front of you, or if there was another fellow stepping into this position right now, what do you think is the most important sort of what should be the focus for them? Where 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 you left off? What is the next most important thing for you in terms of getting the message across? You've done so much this summer. Um, what's next? Um, I think what's next is both helping, um, you know, get more of like a social media presence, but also really trying to get in contact with schools. I think like part of the difficulty of this fellowship was just that it was over the summer and a lot of people aren't working um, in these K through 12 schools. Mm -hmm. So I think next time I would have definitely like started reaching out earlier into the summer when people are still working. So yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much.